I see you want to learn more about logic. So let me tell you more about it. First, let's talk about sensors. As of version 6.5, there are three types of sensors. The player, target, and tag sensors. The player sensor outputs a signal if the player is inside its radius. The radius can be changed in the properties. The target sensor starts outputting a constant signal after being shot with the gun. The tag sensor outputs a signal if an object with the same tag as the sensor is in its radius. Now let's talk about stuff that interacts with objects. Mover, rotator, destroyer, and tag. All of them except the destroyer are active by default. Meaning you don't need to connect, for example, a battery, in order for them to function. The mover, as its name implies, moves objects, in a certain way and speed. Let's take a look at its properties. Speed X and speed Y change the speed of the mover on the X and Y coordinates. The type property changes how the mover will move objects. There are four possible types. Force, impulse, velocity, and direct. Force with a speed Y value set against the gravity will result in the object having no gravity. Velocity with both speeds will result in the object being pseudo-static, meaning it will not move on its own. Direct can move even static objects, as well as text and tech items. Also you can make funny bouncy rubber balls with it. The rotator rotates objects. There is only two properties, first of which is the rotation speed, but as the second is shared between all logic, let's ignore it. The destroyer destroys objects. It just makes them vanish, as if they were never there. The tag gives an object, well, a tag. Such object can then be sensed by a tag sensor. It has the same properties as the tag sensor, minus the radius. Now let's talk about the gates. Most of them accept two inputs. The NOT gate inverts the input signal. The AND gate outputs a signal if two input signals are on. The OR gate outputs a signal if any of the input signals are on. The ZER gate outputs a signal only if one of the input signals are on. Banner song, can Shut you the fuck up. Okay. Let me talk about something else. The signal sender and signal receiver are used to transfer signals over long distances. Or to make stuff like this. The battery outputs a constant signal. The timer outputs a signal after a certain amount of time. It has two inputs. One to start the timer, and another to reset it. In the properties you change the amount of time in seconds. And finally, the level ender. When given an input signal, it will teleport the player to a scoreboard. If there is no scoreboard, the following will happen. Okay, you get the idea. Thanks for wait a second. There is more. Fucking shit, a counter counts how many times it received an input signal. Once the value reaches the maximum, it outputs a signal. Aside from the input that is counted, it also has another one used for resetting it. In the properties you can change the maximum and the current value. The toggle works like a switch. You give it an input signal, and it starts outputting a constant signal. You give it another input signal, and it stops outputting any signals. Alright. Now, thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.